Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the May 11th, 2018 special meeting of the Rockingham Town Board. Ms. Marco, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Cristo? Present. Mr. Gittarelli? Present. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Present. Mr. Signor? Present. And Mr. Thomas? Present. Five present. Shall we please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. So before we begin and we get into the public comment privilege of the floor for uh, for this evening's meeting, I just want to make mention of a, of a couple of things. We have, I think, well over 20 people signed up to speak this evening. What we're going to do is um, I'm going to set set a timer just for four minutes. When the four minutes, it, when, when, you're, when you're at four minutes, I'm just going to put my hand up like this. It doesn't mean you have to stop right away. Please don't put your brakes on. But just take a few more seconds and wrap up your comments so that you can make sure that whatever it is that you would like to say that you get out, okay? But I, I don't want to be put in a position where someone wants to command the microphone for 10 or 15 or minutes or longer, please. So I appreciate your, um, your attention with that. Also, uh, please, if you can, refrain from making any comments back and forth in the seats to people that may be supportive or not of the proposed project that is really before us and during this public hearing. Be professional, it just doesn't help us to not be. Also, more importantly, the stenographer is here in order to take accurate uh, notes of the questions that are being asked, the comments that are being made here this evening. So I, I just, I ask you for your, uh, for your patience and again, your professionalism. I appreciate it very, very much. So the first order of business that I'd like to have is just have a presentation uh, by uh, Jean Lowenstein. She is the town designated engineer from Clough Harbor Associates. So she's only going to take a few minutes and say something, a bit, tell us about the project and where we are in the process uh, right now. Thanks, Jean. Thank you, Supervisor. Um, as Supervisor stated, I'm here tonight just to give a really quick overview of this project and also to identify where we are in the secret process. As most of you already know, this is a, a the Whispering Pine Senior Living District is a 96-acre parcel located between Huddleburg Avenue and the New York State Thruway. It consists of 125 single-family homes, both townhomes and detached, 119 independent living units, 144 assisted living units, 109 memory care units, and will include nine-hole executive golf golf course. Maximum structure height is three stories. There will be two access points, and the project will be constructed in four phases and will take place over approximately four years. In regards to Seeker, the project is a Seeker Type 1 action. The town board, excuse me, for those who don't know, Seeker stands for the State Environmental Quality Review, which is the process we're in right now. The town board, as lead agency, issued a positive declaration on February 14, 2018, and at that time determined that there would be public scoping. They accepted a draft scoping document on February 14, and allowed public comment on the scope through March 14, 2018. Comments that were received by the town were considered, and changes were made to the final scope, which was submitted to the town on March 21st. At the town board's March 28th public, uh, excuse me, town board meeting, they accepted the final scope. Subsequently, the applicant submitted the draft environmental impact statement, or EIS, to the town on April 11, 2018. A completeness review was conducted to ensure that the document meets the, meets the criteria for completeness based on the final scope. Completeness comments were issued on April 20th, and the applicant submitted an updated DEIS on April 23rd. Again, the DEIS was evaluated against the scope for completeness in order to determine if it was complete and adequate for public review. The town, as town designated engineer, we recommended that the town board could consider it as complete for public review, and at their 20, April 25th public, excuse me, town board meeting, 
they did determine, they did deem the document adequate for public review and opened the public comment period. Public comment period runs through May 25th, 2018. All comments that are received tonight and in written form up until and including May 25th will be reviewed for, will be reviewed and considered to be con included in the final, DE, final EIS. If anyone has not had the opportunity to review the document, it is on the town's website. It's also available at the town hall in hard copy form as well as at the Rotterdam branch of the Schenectady Library. All substantive comments will be addressed in the final environmental impact statement. And once that is submitted, the town will be responsible for, for accepting it and preparing a statement of findings on whether to approve um, or not approve this project. Thank you. Okay, thanks for your time. And um, as Ms. Lowenstein said, comments uh, will be accepted uh, through May 25th, 2018. The Rotterdam uh, town website is <coughs> www.rotterdamny.org. And when you go to uh, the town's website, there is a section uh, that basically says town proposed concepts, but the after, if you put in rotterdamny.org and backslash, then just type the words senior-living-community.aspx and it'll bring you right to the page on the website that has all of the uh, draft environmental impact statement sections. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up uh, three public hearings at once this evening. And what we will do is um, have call each speaker up to the to the podium again. Just I saw some people come in here, so I want to just uh, be brief again. Let everyone know the process here. We're going to hold you to four minutes, and we'll, after the four minutes uh, is up, if you will, I'm just going to put my hand up, try to wrap up your comments, and take another 15 seconds or so, and uh, so that the next speaker can have the opportunity to get up and speak. So, Ms. Marco, let's uh, start with public. Just if you don't mind, we're going to open all three public hearings at once. So please, please read each public hearing. Number one, draft environmental impact statement, DEIS. Number two, to create a new zoning classification of Chapter 270 Zoning Article 31 entitled Senior Living District. Number three, to allow for a change of zone request for Lisi Senior Living LLC for property located in Rotterdam, New York, 12306, known as Tax Max Number 71.5-1. Dash 5.112-2188 Heldeberg Avenue, 71.5-1-7.1-2196 dash dash Heldeberg Avenue, 71.5-1-5.111-2200 dash dash Heldeberg Avenue, 71.5-1-9-2204 dash dash Heldeberg Avenue, 71.5-1-8111 dash dash no address. 71-5-1-8112-2208 Heldeberg Avenue, 71.5-1-10-21-2212 Heldeberg Avenue, and 71.9-2-21.11 and Browns Farm. The applicant is requesting a change of zone from Agricultural A1 to Senior Living District SLD for a project to be known as the Whispering Pines Senior Living Community. The proposal is to generally consist of the construction of 125 single family homes, townhomes or detached, 119 independent living units, 108 memory care units, 144 assisted living units, reconfiguring the existing 18 hole executive golf course into a nine hole executive golf course that includes a new 2,500 square foot clubhouse in 1,300 square foot maintenance building on a plus or minus 90 acres. A total of 496 residential units are proposed and will be developed up to four phases over an estimated four year period, depending upon market demands. This will be accompanied by the addition of sewer and water infrastructure and roadways, and as, and as well as stormwater management features. Okay, thank you. And um, when you do come up, please um, address your comments to the to the board. Also, um, we're 
I ask that we not get into a, again, a question and answer session here this evening. The, the comments and the questions that you have, we will collect and then provide a written comment back to everyone. So Ms. Marco, who's first? It looks like Joel B. County. Good evening, Town Board, Supervisor Joel Bianchi from MJ Engineering. You gotta talk closer. My firm, MJ Engineering, was the primary author of the DEIS uh, supported by various consultants. And I will be brief because a lot of the information that I was going to cover was already talked about. The project is located at Helderberg Avenue, includes eight adjacent parcels, totaling approximately 96 acres. <coughs> Under the proposed Senior Living District zoning designation, senior housing will be applied to approximately 84 acres of the project. While the current proposal reduces the number of units, removes all commercial elements with the exception of the golf course, and attempts to address comments received from the town and the public over the last year, the primary concept of the project to create a senior living community to allow residents to age in place remains intact. So to briefly summarize the changes from what the original proposal was versus what we're proposing today, the original concept had roughly 680 units, maximum building stories of four stories, um, uses of uh, ancillary to the living community center, including pool, fitness center, spa, fitness, uh, cafe, all of those uses were open to the public. We also had the reconfigured uh, golf course into a nine hole course, and we originally proposed a 5,000 square foot medical office and urgent care available to the public. Now we're proposing 496 units, um, reduced the number of max to, to a max story of three stories. The ancillary uses associated with the living community of a spa pool are still available, but only available to the residents. Um, and then the nine hole course is still planned to be reconfigured. So to just summarize those changes, the living units got reduced by 140, 184 residential units. We've reduced the building height from four to three stories max. The medical office urgent care has been eliminated. Other, other changes, parking spaces have been reduced from 456 to 374, not the 600 plus that may have been reported. And then again, with the exception of the golf course remaining open to the general public, there are no, no aspects of the current project that are consider, considered commercial uses. So briefly to go over infrastructure improvements, the project will extend water from the town water system at Helderberg Avenue into the site at no cost to the town. Electric and natural gas will be extended from natural grid systems at Hildeberg Avenue into the site at no cost to the town. Sewer will come from the town systems either at Hildeberg Metal Subdivision to the east, Hamburg Street to the west, both approximately a third of a mile away from the project at no cost to the town. Stormwater management will be on site where the majority of these systems are located away from adjoining properties. We will be maintaining or decreasing the amount of runoff that leaves the site under the build condition. All stormwater management systems will be owned by the project sponsor at no cost to them. <coughs> Two drives are proposed off of Helderberg Avenue, both full access. There's internal roads. Emergency access will be provided off Keter Drive with lock gates and access available only to emergency responders. Now speaking to the town's comprehensive plan, the town comprehensive plan speaks to the need for senior living arrangements in the town of Rotterdam. Specifically, the climate state states, with an aging population comes the need for senior citizen housing. Rotterdam has a severe shortage of senior citizen apartments. However, recent approvals and funding by the New York State and HUD will improve the number of available units located in the town. The town should encourage the development of new houses that is reasonably priced through the adoption of specific regulatory measures. The comp plan also had other implementing tasks. We believe this project meets those. It provides housing options strictly for seniors, provides housing diversity, provides non-residential uses in the form of the golf course, and most importantly, convert, conserves natural resources. Some other facts, and I'll be brief. All, again, all improvements proposed are completed without any funding provided by the town. The project will impact the local school district in a positive manner with an increase in tax revenue without any age, school age population. And again, to, sh to talk about the study, the, the DEIS includes various studies that were taken in depth covering various topics. I won't go into detail. And again, we look forward to addressing public comments in the responsive summary of the FBIS, which is the next step in the process. Thank you. Melvin Mintz. No. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, obviously, my name is Melvin Mintz. I live at 2273 Helderberg Avenue. And I uh, just want to say this before I really get started. I was remiss the last time I spoke. I didn't welcome the two new board members, 
and congratulations on winning, and I wish you a lot of luck. <coughs> Thank uh, you, sir. You're, you're, Thank you. You're quite welcome. <laughs> uh, features and amenities, private in-building garages, elevator access, secured access building, community clubhouse, billiard room, private movie theater, state-of-the-art fitness center, complimentary coffee bar, resort-style swimming pool. Holy mackerel, where is this? Well, one would use the terminology right around the corner from Helderberg Avenue on Kilderland, Gilderland on Curry Road. It's called Vistic Square, and it has over a hundred apartments, etc., and in two phases. So why do we need another existing type of entity in a highly residential, primarily beautiful community in Rotterdam, a nice place to live, that's strictly residential, 100% from Curry Road to County Line Road? It has approximately 12 roads that are accessed to Helderberg directly. I didn't count the houses on these side streets, but there are 98 homes on Helderberg Avenue Plus, not counting homes on the corners. Secondly, we now have large trucks coming down, tractor trailers. Why? Because they can't travel on Curry Road and go under the underpass. They have to turn at Curry Road and Helderberg, go down to County Line, and I happen to live on the corner, and I live with it, and go down county line to go around and circumvent the underpass. Three, has anyone checked the throughway, the bridge over the throughway, structurally, for the additional traffic that's going to be created, and the type of trucks that are going to have to come and continue coming down Elderberg Avenue? We have a situation on Helderberg now that's called Birch Garden. It started out one way and had to change over the year or two because they couldn't fill it necessarily on the project the way it was, senior citizen only. Now they have people in certain sections of that project that has changed when it started one way and now it's different where we have understandably, people with children. Putting to that point, I think we've all seen the school district called Mahonison School District. And what it's going through, positions eliminated on the proposal included one full-time administrator, ten full-time teaching positions, and other part-time teaching positions. The district officials estimate the reductions will increase class size in grades K through 6. Now, we're supposed to have senior citizen this development, <coughs> but who knows what's going to change in six months or a year from now if they don't fill it or when the second phase comes along. And Rotterdam has allowed a change on some of its projects after it's presented to us, the public. What I am saying to you is that I am not against the nine-hole golf course, thank you, I will cut it short, and I'm not necessarily against the single homes. Why can't we have the developer take a look at building 200 and 300 and 400 thousand dollar homes throughout this project area instead? I understand the people that own the golf course would like to sell it. They've been here 70 years or plus, the people. I've been in the town of Rotterdam where I lived for 55 years, so it's not as great. So I'm asking you to take a look and see why we can't develop into so you get tax money. This development definitely could have a negative effect on the 98 homes and the homes on the side roads that tax money will be reduced by this development. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, Kirk Armstrong. I'm one of the owners of Whispering Pines. And mainly, I just wanted to come down today to thank a lot of the neighbors, and I've been friends with for years. The majority of the people in our neighborhood actually support this program. Excuse me, please. You're, you're going to hear a lot of noise from a small, very vocal majority, minority, but I've gotten letters over the years, or all, all last year, letters, nice letters from people, telephone calls, and mostly a lot of them just stop in and to let us know that they're in support of that, that uh, project. And if, if talk about the way development should be done these days, see, you know, putting a bunch of single family houses in there is not the way to go. Modern development these days is cluster housing. And when, when we first talked about selling this, that was the first thing that builders came to us wanting to do single family houses. And that's why I got a hold of Lou Leesey when I saw the development, the senior development that he did over in Glenville. To me, that's the most appropriate thing for that area. It's not going to have the negative impact of the, of the suburban sprawl again. Okay, so mainly I just want to thank a lot of the neighbors for coming in. I want to thank Joe Gitarelli for stopping over, looked at, for, at the uh, land. He's the only member of the town board who's come over and looked at it. Uh, Steve was over one time last year. Whether he votes for it or not, I don't know, but at least he says he's going to have an open mind. And that's all I can ask. So I just like to tell the board members, if, if you guys are there to do what's best for the majority of people in the town, this is the project you want to vote for and should be unanimously voted approval for you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Armstrong. Thank you, Kurt. Mary Lodowski. Good evening, everybody. My name is Mary Malachinowski. Good evening to the board, everybody in the room tonight. Um, I'm here tonight to let everybody know that I support the project. I've lived in Notre Dame for 63 years, um, resided in my home for 43. Um, there's a lot of seniors in Notre Dame, and I would ask that people really <clears throat> give a turn to them, time for them to move on, relocate. Um, so make that your consideration. And we are for the project ourselves, my husband. Thank you. Bailey Sheehan. Hi, my name is Bill Sheehan. I live at 2241 Elberg Avenue. I have a long list of people who are speaking, so I'll get to the point. This is the wrong project in the wrong place. Clearly, residents in the area south of the thruway don't really want it. Simple drive through the area will tell you that. Signs on almost every property between high school and county line road are sending you that message. Um, what we have is a really nice residential neighborhood. We have plenty of rush hour traffic as it is, morning and evening. Uh, it's an easy route between Schenectady and Gilderland, and a lot of people take advantage of it. But in those off-peak hours, it's an area that joggers, bicyclists, dog walkers, avail themselves to and enjoy quite a bit. It's quiet enough in the quiet times that you can hear cars running up and down the throughway. You can hear a train passing on the tracks that are over half a mile away. And from my house, the corner of Heldeberg and Fisher, you can hear the marching band rehearsals all the way from high school. It's good quality of life. It's why I live here. I've been here for 23 years. And I've spent that time and a lot of money, as a lot of people on the street have, to make it and keep it nice. This development will ruin all of that. The project construction, four years worth, the additional traffic will, will degrade that quality of life. Life, rather. Uh, zoning is meant to protect areas like this. And spot zoning, which is what I see this as, undermines that whole concept. It's unfair to people who have invested here, who work daily to keep our neighborhood as we like it. Surely there are other places that the developer could build without disrupting an area that really doesn't need the headache. Um, and the paper's sticking to that back for years. Um, if the Armstrongs uh, want to move along, it's understandable. 
people do want to move along. Has the town given any thought to the purchase of the golf course and adding it to the town's recreational options? The city of Schenectady and the town of Colony have golf courses. And they make them work for the community. Perhaps that's a, a, an option here. The developer's fortunes, and they're a considerably sized company after looking over the website, their fortunes don't rise and fall on this project, but ours do. Don't ruin one of the nicer neighborhoods in this town. Find the developer uh, acreage somewhere else. Uh, we ask you to reject this zoning change and stop this plan for this place once and for all. Thank you. much for allowing me to speak. I came tonight to support this project and I wanted to voice the perspective of a family that actually needs assisted living in this community. My family and I have over the past year started to deal with a parent that has become significantly ill and needed a lot of care. During the time that we started to deal with this we started to realize we need to find other options and when we looked around in our town we had no options. There are zero options here. My mother-in-law mm -hmm needs assisted living and needed assisted living desperately and we have nothing in this town we're a very close-knit family we see her at least every other day my husband is at her house at least every day and we just she now has to be too far away from us for us to be able to continue to do that one of the things that i would point out is when you have an elderly parent that needs a lot of care you have to enlist the help of a lot of people and one of, the, one of the issues that the proponents bring up is that there's going to be about 200 employees coming in and out of this project. Well, when we attempted to keep my mother-in-law at home, we had to bring in hospice and visiting nurses and home health aides and preachers and massage therapists and people to handle her medications and people to clean her house. I was there at least three times a day myself, changing diapers, cleaning the house, making sure she had food. My husband had to leave work every single day to bring her lunch, bring her dinner. It is, there is a significant amount of people that are already coming into this town just for one elderly parent. I can't imagine the amount of people that are coming into this town already for all of the elderly people that need care here. And I think it's probably far more than 200 people. On top of that, my mother-in-law purchased her home in Rotterdam in 1968. For 30 years prior to that, she lived on Cox Avenue and then purchased a home on Cox Avenue. I now live in that home on Cox Avenue. She raised five children in this community. She paid taxes. Her husband ran a small business, a business that her sons took over, my husband included. She deserves better. She deserves to be in the middle of this town in a nice area and not on the outskirts, not in a commercial district. We want access to her close and daily, and we want her to have a nice home that provides some assisted living that we can visit on a daily basis. The residents of our town that need this type of care deserve better. They deserve a nice area and they deserve a nice home, so I would ask the board to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Chet Panacea. I'm um, speaking on behalf of my mom, who is a senior in the town of uh, Rotterdam. She, she resides at 1133 Trinity Avenue. Um, and we're kind of going through the same thing with her as the lady just mentioned a little while ago. Um, so I'm here to speak in favor um, of this project uh, today to support the Whispering Pines uh, development. Uh, seniors in the Rotterdam need a development. They can retire and stay in their hometown so they can continue to live their lives. This development allows residents to stay in, in a place that will cons consistently meet their needs as they age and get older. Um, the town and the Mahoneson School District will greatly benefit from the new taxes they receive you know, based on this, on this project. With, the, main, with the, the, the type of construction and the maintenance-free living that they're proposing, the nature trails, the golf and tennis courts that they're proposing, all these features of this project make it a win-win for the residents and seniors of the town and the town of Rotterdam. So I, I vote in favor for the town to 
pass and approve this project. Thank you. Anthony DiCarlo. <coughs> I'm Anthony DiCarlo, live at 426 Jenny Court in the town of Rotterdam. I also own property on Curry Road. I grew up on Hellberg Avenue. Uh, I've had every opportunity to leave this area. Um, I chose not to, and as I grow older, I choose not to in the future. So I support this project 100%. Kathleen Convoy. Good evening. I'm Kathleen Convoy, and I live on Fabian Drive here in Rotterdam. I moved here, oh, I'm a youngster, only maybe 20 years ago, because I knew this was a nice place to live. I love the access to health care, doctors, pharmacies, there's great grocery shopping, there's public transportation, Rotterdam has a lot going for it. But I'm finding, and I worked for many years with seniors here in Schenectady County, that most of us, again, as we get to a certain age, begin to realize we can't always continue to maintain our homes, but we sure would like to stay here in the area. When I first heard about this project, I thought, doesn't that sound like just exactly what I and so many of my friends are looking for? I honestly can't imagine how this is threatening to people, to have a group of people like me sharing a housing area with meals available if you don't feel like cooking and exercise and all the things that are important as we age staying where we are aging in place remaining independent staying as healthy as possible and having friends that we can walk with and talk with so as i get older and realize that i'm going to have to give up my home like others who have spoken i'm thinking where will i go this is a wonderful opportunity in Rotterdam for those of us who want to continue to live here. I strongly support the project. I have spoken with many others who also do. I just don't want a small minority to speak for many of us who truly think this is a great project and who support it. Thank you. Secretary. So I'm here. Um, I'm not at all just, surprised. Just, just take your name and address for the. Oh, day. I'm sorry. Del Pierce. I live at 2253 Gens Road. I've been a resident at that address for a little over 40 years. Um, I'm not at all surprised that we're here again tonight, uh, one year after you voted down the initial proposal. Let me tell you why. On June 14th of 2017, by happenstance, I sat next to a person I had never met, Shelley Dodson. Directly in front of Miss Miss Dodson sat Miss Mr. Leachy, the developer of the senior living project at Whispering Pines. During the debate on that project involving people from the audience, including uh, Mr. Dodson, Shelley's husband, and members of the board, Mr. Leachy leaned back in his seat and said a remark. To Miss Dodson that I clearly heard. I quote, if this doesn't pass, I'm not going away. I hope you have deep pockets. Close quotes. I emailed each and every one of you, including Miss McGurl, with my concern regarding the appropriateness of that remark. I never received a single reply. So I'm here again tonight to voice my opposition to the village at Whispering Pines for the following reason. <clears throat> spot zoning. The classic definition of spot zoning is, in quotes, the process of singling out a small parcel of land for a use classification totally different from that of the surrounding area for the benefit of the owner 
of such property and to the de detriment of other owners. I got that from Anderson's American Law of Zoning, 4th edition, section 5.12, copyright 1995. So, <clears throat> the traffic, we've all talked about the traffic. Uh, there's no sidewalks. Um, I'm going to cut some of this short because I've, I've added some things at the end. Um, there's, it's very difficult to walk on that road. I have a very good friend who I love very much who was struck and nearly killed while walking along that very stretch of road right near where the entrance will be for uh, this new project should it be approved. She had to be medevaced by helicopter to Albany Med, and thank God she's still here today with some sustaining injuries. School children, many school children walk this road to and from classes and extracurricular activities. The cross country kids run on this, on this road. This massive increase in traffic has, as has been cited before, and four years of construction. That's like four years of Hamburg Street that we're going through right now. There will be extra services required. There will be a need for extra police coverage, adding to a public safety budget, which already threatens to break the bank in this town. But I'll get back to that in a moment. Also, there will be more stress on our volunteer fire department, currently struggling to meet staffing needs as older members drop out. Water and sewage. It sounded very good when the engineer um, um, sorry, I, I, I've forgotten his name, but when he came up here and said this is no cost to the town and that's no cost to the town, this and that, they're no cost to the town. But I'll ask this, if we have to, uh, if the town has to supply a lot more water to that area for uh, the um, golf course, and uh, not for the golf course, but for the pod, spas and pools and houses and, and all the development and everything, Will we have to run new pipes? Will we have to drink, uh, drill new wells? I really don't know. And will our current wastewater plant handle the additional strain of the sewage that will come out of, out of that particular place? And then if it doesn't, then who will pay for that? So I understood, uh, okay, the, the folks here, uh, I understood the people that were Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I understand the folks that were uh, talking about their, the needs of their family. And believe me, I know that. Uh, my mom just passed away in a nursing home. I'm currently caring for my, uh, my aunt in another nursing home. I, I understand about um, living, assisted living units and memory care units. They cost a lot of money, eight to $10,000 a year. If you don't have it, you have to leave. There's no Medicaid or Medicare in these units whatsoever. And if you get sick, you're going to have to leave and go to a nursing home because uh, Medicaid will not pay for it. So, um, I mean, there's no uh, nursing care there. So, I urge you to uh, vote down this, uh, this project. <clears throat> Christine LeBaire Van Buren. Just one thing, I just, if you, uh, as you come up, Christine, if she, I'm sorry, if you, if you want to move to a different position with the camera, if you want to come up here or somewhere else, you're welcome to do that while we're, uh, yeah, sure. Hey. Yep. Because then you can also go out that door. <laughs> You're afraid of the officer. You can also go out there. Christine LeBaron. She doesn't want to speak. Oh, sorry. She doesn't want to speak. No worries. No worries. No worries. We don't want to. Joe Matarazzo. Good evening, board members and residents of Rotterdale. My name is Joe Matarazzo, and I was at 2216 Heldeberg Avenue with my wife and daughter. I own four acres of land adjacent to the proposed project. 
I am not here to talk about the senior living development being proposed at the Whispering Pines Golf Course tonight. There are plenty enough other residents here just for that. I'm not here to talk about the traffic, even though I believe this proposal, excuse me, proposed project will significantly increase the traffic on Helderberg Avenue. Nor am I here to talk about the size of this project, or the impact that it will have on this nice, quiet neighborhood, <laughs> or even the studies that have been done on the water, soil, and the wildlife. Even though I do now enjoy having deer, turkey, Woody the woodpecker, bats, fox, rabbits, owls, and a number of other wildlife in my backwoods, that will, in my opinion, potentially disappear from my property once this project goes through. I am here to talk about the future. The future of our neighborhood and my property once this project is approved. I want everybody to jump into their time machines now and skip ahead to the year 2023. Helderberg Avenue is now a busy corridor with shops, gas stations, convenience stores, and possibly even a small shopping plaza, similar to the one to the way Altamont Avenue has become, still with no sidewalks. Why? Because in 2018, the town board decided to push a senior living project through, even though there was significant opposition from so many town residents that the town elects were supposed to be represented. That project was the Whispering Pines Senior Living Project. Once the project was pushed through, there was a need for more development in this area. And at my property, 2216 Helderberg Avenue, where a nice family residential house once stood in a quiet neighborhood setting, is now a bustling four acre hot rod shop <laughs> with cars, motorcycles, and small engines being repaired possibly 24 hours a day, customers in and out, all because a variance was issued for that business that the town unanimously approved. Keep in mind that the town board <coughs> is no longer made up of any of the elected officials that are here tonight. You guys were all voted out by the town residents after the senior living projects went through. Of course, prior to the town approving the hot rod shop, there was opposition. And that opposition came from the neighbors of the senior living complex because they did not want a hot rod shop built in their backyard. There was no neighbors on Helderberg Avenue opposing this because there are no Helderberg Avenue neighbors left. Most have, most have sold out for a commercial development. The senior, liver, li uh, the senior liver, living neighbors were strongly opposed to the zone change, however. The town believed that the hot rod shop, motorcycle shop, would benefit the town of Rotterdam and it would increase the tax base. Okay, now let's come back to the year 2018. When the senior living project goes through on almost 100 acres with his own change, I'll be asking to change my property that is currently zoned for agricultural to commercial. I believe with all the studies that Mr. Lisi has done, that this shouldn't be a problem for the town board. Of course, I don't have deep pockets like Mr. Lisi, Lisi does, but I'll be writing on the coattails of Mr. Lisi's studies. And if the neighbors oppose, who cares? It'll be uh, what the town board wants. As a matter of fact, I ask all residents in the neighborhood to ask for his own change so that this neighborhood be, can become the new gateway to the west. I'll be asking for a zone change on my property after this project goes through. Thank you. member of the board, all the fine residents that took time on this nice Friday night to come out for this meeting. 
My name is Shelly Dodson. I reside at 1311 Cipriana Terrace. I'm not surprised to be standing here again for this same zone change request for a senior living district for the Wick Village at Whispering Pines. Mr. Lessie threatened me at the June 2017 uh, meeting when the zone change was voted down. And he said, if this doesn't go through, I hope you have deep pockets because I'm not going anywhere. I don't believe Mr. Lessie is pushing uh, this project for the benefit of seniors in Rotterdam. He was inspired to develop properties by the game Monopoly in his interview in the Business Journal from September 14, 2017. He chose not to submit the alternative plan, which is for single unit housing development, because he can make more money in this massive commercial project. <coughs> Mr. Lessie has a reputation for controversial projects in the Capital District. There was a stop work order February 27, 2018 for his personal 4,000 square foot home in, um, on 17 acres in Niskayuna. Um, they were clearing and grading beyond what was approved in the building permit. And many of the Lessie Group projects <coughs> require tearing down homes and existing buildings to build three-story commercial and apartment units that require zone changes and modifications. I don't like being treated as a game of monopoly. Rotterdam residents work hard to raise their families and pay their taxes. I've attended planning board meetings and board, and, uh, and board meetings for this project. Um, the planning board meetings and board meetings for this project. Mr. Lessie and his people have attended these meetings and at the April 25th 2018 board meeting there were two main topics one being the DPW facilities the plow trucks and the salt shed and the other was the shutdown of the brush lawn waste location in Rotterdam I witnessed mr. Lisi as he was leaving laughing and joking about having to sit through these mundane items he just wanted to hear the board approve this public hearing for this village at Whispering Pines <laughs> I'm a resident of over 15 years in this neighborhood we purchased our home there because it was quiet and away from the hustle and bustle of Altamont Ave. I'm a runner. Mr. Cousteau has passed me twice in the last week while I was on my uh, mid-morning run. Both times there was traffic coming from both directions and there's not a lot of room for a pedestrian and two vehicles to pass. In 23 minutes of my run on several occasions I counted 77 cars another time 66 cars. This project will impact the safety of all pedestrians who walk, run, ride their bikes on Heldeberg Ave. It'll be a danger to have construction vehicles and service deliveries to this commercial complex along with additional vehicles from the new residents and 206 plus employees. The town implemented a new school zone speed limit of 20 miles an hour for Heldeberg Ave by the school. The additional traffic will be going through the school zone. It's amazing that our leadership would consider having all this additional traffic go through this low speed school zone and people still speak through the whole length of Haldeberg Ave. I sat through the Planning commission, Board Commission meeting on this project. All the members stated that they were for this project and they'd like to live there. One of them said it would be great for her parents. None of, them, none of them asked any questions other than adding a sidewalk. A project this large and none of them had serious questions. None of them asked about the alternative plan. The area is much more suited for single family housing. Mr. Thomasone wants the revenue from this complex and touts that there will be no added burden to Mahoniston School District. Did he care about the additional burden to the school when they approved the large Vista Square apartments or the Draper apartments? Tax revenues from single homes would add more money in tax revenue than this development will. The owners at Whispering Pines met with Mr. Lessie in 2015 and were quietly interested in selling their golf course. They never listed it for sale as a golf course. The neighborhood will definitely be changed by adding this commercial complex. It does not match the character of the existing homes. 60 foot high buildings are way too large. They're 20 feet taller, wrapping it up. They're 20 feet taller than the Vista apartments on Curry Road. There will be noise from emergency vehicles, lighting to, the, to light the 600 plus car parking lot, service delivery trucks, traffic from new residents, employees, and visitors. And that's not talking construction. This exact Jones zone change request was voted down last June by 401. Mr. Tom Thomasone abstained. Ms. Miller Herrera, you voted no. And Mr. Cousteau, you voted no. I would ask them to still vote no as the project is only smaller by 24 units. Nothing else has changed. We have two new board members, Joe Guitarelli, who ran on a two year no new construction, commercial construction, apartment construction moratorium, and Mr. Signor. 
I would ask them to vote no on this zone change from the agricultural residential to senior living district. It's a great concept, wrong location. Thank you for your concern. Next question, uh, My name is Nick Esposito. I'm at 1318 Cipriana Terrace. Uh, I had quite a few notes prepared here, but I'm, I'm not going to get into uh, to the project itself, I should say. People start to talk about the water, if we need or not. I will agree, though. I will say, maybe we do need housing like this. And I don't disagree with that. I just disagree with the area. I mean, this area, you know, this area turned into farmland, I don't know how many years ago, 50 or 60 years ago. And it's never really changed with the infrastructure, the roadways, the systems like that. You're putting in a building, a massive project, in an area that can't be changed. I mean, you look at the roadway system, we don't own, I believe it's a county road? Okay. If the traffic cannot handle what, what's about to come down the what's about to come down the road, we have a problem. You guys can't do anything about it. That's what I see. And there's a lot of people you know, a lot of people out here that use the place. We're going to have an issue with that. Other than that, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Rick Lamora at 2026 West Side Avenue. I just wanted to mention the two things that I think before you even consider um, any kind of project in this Heldeberg section of town need to be handled before a project is even considered, let alone already ready to go with it. First of all, I've heard for years on the town board, the number one thing I've always heard, public safety. Well, we need sidewalks along that road from where the bridge is, past Cipriano, further down. That has to be done before anything is done because even one extra car could be a problem for somebody's life. I've been on those roads handing out flyers and getting signatures. It's very dangerous for an adult. How about a child walking on it? How about somebody wanting to actually go visit a neighbor or somebody wanting to ride a bicycle? It's dangerous, and all you're going to do is add to the problem. The other, the other issue I want to bring up is sewers. Now, there's no sewer lines anywhere in the vicinity, so that means you're going to have to run sewer lines for a long distance. Now, that's not on the town or the town's taxpayers to pay for that. That's going to be on, on the developer, and that's a lot of money involved for that kind of a distance to go. Plus. It's going to be on them for the maintenance, and if there's a problem, we have a leak or something, they're going to have to deal with that. And also, how about how many lines and families and uh, different people's properties that you're going to have to go through to get there? There's going to be so much involved in that. That itself is, a, is the cost of the project, just about. That's very involved, and there's so many things that can go wrong, so many spills so many problems that can happen that needs to be taken care of and considered and figured out completely not just ideas that needs to be figured out completely before the project is e before you even vote positive on it and that's all i have to say Thank you. Well, My name is Joe Barone. I live at 2261 Hallibury Avenue. Steve, I've known you for quite a while. Diane, you've helped me so many times. I just want to tell you guys, I grew up in Hamilton Hill, Schenectady, where if you left your windows open at night, you would hear gunshot, you would hear screaming, you would hear fighting and sirens. I bought this house out here in Hallibury Avenue about 18 years ago, I think it is. I love it. I can leave my windows open at night, I can hear the birds chirping in the morning, the frogs, the peepers, and it's great. I look out the window, I'll see my neighbors across the street, they just moved in a couple years ago with five little kids. 
revitalizing the neighborhood. Bringing this project and adding all this traffic and, and uh, it, it's just wrong. I wouldn't have even thought of coming out here if I knew this was going to happen. Um, as far as them selling a golf course, maybe they ought to go down to New York City where the people have a lot of money. Advertise it down there. There's a lot of rich people down there that come up here for the summer. They'd probably buy that thing and get more than what he's getting for this developer or whatever it is. I just say, you got to vote no. I want to stay here. I don't want to move out of here. I love it. I put a lot of money in that house. I've had several neighbors come up and tell me how they like what I've done with it. I don't want to leave. But if you do this, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I, I love it here. Don't change it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Jack Dodson, 1311 Cipriano Terrace. Um, spent a lot of time with you. I'm going to keep it to the point. Um, I have been very proactive in informing the public on the details of this development. I have attended numerous planning meetings, numerous board meetings to stay abreast and to ensure transparency and conformance to Seeker for this project. <clears throat> it is my position that Old Senior Living District at Whispering Pines is the same commercial project with its own change that was defeated in 2017. There was overwhelming opposition to the project. Why would a new town board reconsider a project to be built in the same location that was previously rejected. The, the zone change is the same that was rejected in 2017. Once the matter has been decided, an application seeking the same relief must be denied. This new development submitted on January 8, 2018 is essentially the same proposed project that was withdrawn and the zone change defeated. In fact, the developer used the same reports and environmental reports from last year. If you look in the DEIS, the environmental assessment form is the same form from 2017. They didn't even update it. <coughs> you cannot have a continuous application that are a duplicate of the previous one that was discussed, both by the public and by the town, and was rejected by the town board. All matters must come to an end. I submit the proposal by the Lisi Group is considered a legal spot zoning. I believe the, the request is arbitrary, capricious, and unreasonable treatment of a limited parcel of land. It is unjustified benefit to the property owner to the detriment of the general land use. It only benefits a particular owner and undermine, and I'm going to repeat this, undermines the pre-existing rights we have and the uses of the adjacent property owners. A determination whether the zoning should be granted should be made either after an extensive review process, including consideration of the impact on adjoining residential areas, consistency with existing zone plans, environmental concerns, and the availability of other suitable sites. Not a lot of work here on other suitable sites. In this case, the evidence reveals that rezoning would not benefit the community as a whole and would be enacted with, without regard to the community and not pursuant to a comprehensive plan that was enacted by this town. During the various steps of the secret process, I submit the town board as lead agency has committed several procedural violations, which I provided notice in writing to the town board. They include my February 26, 2018 letter to the town board. Why did the town board accept and post on the town website a draft environmental impact statement before scoping of the project was even started? Okay, the regulations note that scoping precedes preparation of the DEIS. This circumvents the intent of seeker and compromises the integrity of the process. March 8th letter to the town board. Why is the town board as the lead agency for the proposed Whispering Pine Senior Living District development intentionally, intentionally hindering a robust debate? 
The Planning Commission never allowed any public comments or questions at any meeting when the project was discussed. They put on their agenda, public, you cannot speak. That is ridiculous. The town board is haphazardly approving uh, developments in this town with no guiding principles. The town board proclaims they are for open government, transparency, and public trust. Yet they shield the planning board members with all, who ultimately make the recommendation to you guys on the zone change. Okay? You guys making the zone change. Residents who own property adjacent and opposite to this project were buffered out with a zoning district, okay? So they couldn't have anything to say. They're non, this is non-compliant with the town comprehensive plan and town regulations. Buffering that includes utilizing private property, okay, defeats the intent of the zoning. Given the previous decisions by the town board to reject the zone change for the senior living district, the fact that this current proposed development does not include significant changes from the pre previous withdrawal project and several secret <laughs> procedural issues, I urge the town board to vote no, no for the zone change and no to the village at West Spring Pine Senior Living District. Thank you. Supervisor Thomason and members of the town board, I am Shane Mahar from Lisi Senior Living. I'd like to take a moment to thank the individuals, many of them senior citizens, who support the Village of Whispering Pines project. I've had the opportunity to speak with several of them personally, and I've gotten to know quite a few over the last year. The seniors with whom, I've, who I, with whom I have chatted remind me a lot of my grandparents, hardworking, family-oriented people that care for and contribute to their community. At 91 and 92, my grandparents have just recently taken residency at a 24-hour care facility. As a family, we have been very fortunate to have had them home and independent for as long as we have. Whereas many families need to make a difficult decision regarding long-term care much sooner than we did. The Village of Whispering Pines has been designed to allow seniors the ability to age in place as they live out their retirement years in the community they built and in a location that offers them convenient access to services. Some of the people who have spoken against our proposal have said they support the concept but believe the location is wrong. Although there are tracts of land still available in the western area of the town, to our knowledge, none of them have access to the utilities and infrastructure needed and bringing those services to a remote location would make the project too expensive and unaffordable for the senior citizens. In many of my conversations with seniors from Rotterdam, I am often asked two questions. Will you be open before I die? And how do I reserve a spot in the new development? My response to the first question is, I sincerely hope so. In reference to the second question, we already have a waiting list. In our initial submission during 2017, we gathered 120 signatures of support. Over the last week, staff from our office has reached out to those individuals and were able to confirm that an overwhelming majority still support the project. There were a few that we were unable to reach. In addition to confirming their support, we circulated a new petition ahead of this evening's hearing that has a total of 167 signatures of support. So in total, for tonight, Diane, I'm submitting to you 287 signatures of support between the two petitions. The project team is aware that as of 10.30 this morning, the town received 15 written comments ahead of this meeting, nine supporting the project, four against, one neutral. Several of the supporting letters were from neighbors of the project site. One of those letters was received from San Assemblyman Santa Barbara. I'd like to take a minute to read his letter. April 19, 2018, dear Supervisor Thomason, I write to support the application submitted for the Village of Whispering Pines, a senior housing project on a 96-acre parcel located on Helderberg Avenue in the town of Rotterdam. 
In the New York State Assembly, I represent Montgomery County and parts of Albany and Schenectady counties. In all of these upstate communities, there is a growing need for senior housing to accommodate the aging population. With this project, the town would add 125 single-family homes, 119 independent living units, 144 assisted living units, and 108 memory care units to help meet this need and still have a tremendous demand for housing of this type. As a civil engineer, I am also pleased to see a number of site-specific spe site improvements in this project that consider public safety and quality of life for future residents. The proposal offers a maintenance-free property including the roadways managed by a homeowners association and the expected combined uh, town, county, and school real property tax receipts for this project upon the full build-out are estimated at more than $1 million. Since permanent residency is age-restricted, the local school district also has the potential of receiving additional real property tax revenue without adding to the school population. <laughs> With this proposal, we have an opportunity to help meet the increasing demand of the aging population that wish to live here in our beautiful town. I ask that you support, I ask that you keep all of this in mind as you consider this proposal. Sincerely, Angelo, Assemblyman Angelo Santa Barbara. On behalf of the project team, thank you. Terry Holton. Hi, I'm Terry Copeland. I live at 2209 Helderberg Avenue. Um, I am going to read section four of the draft environmental impact statement. Section four of the DEIS acknowledges unavoidable impacts. Change of character of the neighborhood, increased traffic, decreased quality of life, increased demand on municipal water and sewer systems, increased demand on public service, police, fire, ambulance, long-term operation and maintenance and infrastructure demands, increased noise, increased lighting, reduction in undevelopment open space, and loss of habitat. Don't accept these unavoidable impacts. Town board, you have the vote to reject this commercial development. Vote no to the Village of Whispering Pine Senior Living District. Lucy is a local resident 
and has a track record of several successful large-scale projects in the capital region. I'm confident that this project will be done in a tastefully and professionally manner. In closing, I encourage the town to do the right thing and approve this project. Thank you. Thank you. And for that, Councilor Allen? Can we, can we, um, can I ask? Oh, that's right. We, sorry. One second. No, I apologize. Yeah. For sure? Okay. Just a stenographer needed a break, and I don't want to. She oh, needs to keep she talking. Not? Okay. Yeah, she's not going to speak. Okay. So Why don't you go ahead? Yeah. We'll do go ahead and do what you need to do. Wait a minute. Okay. okay. Just. A seventh inning stretch, you guys all always want to talk baseball. Um, we'll just wait, just give it a couple minutes. Apologize, thank you everyone for your patience. We accept it. Kathleen Nash. <laughs> Kathleen Nash. <laughs> Kathleen Nash. Is there a Kathleen Nash? <laughs> Kathleen Nash. That's all right. Well, it's okay. Kathleen Nash. Okay. Let's go again. Let's uh, continue. Next. Susan Sempervero. Sorry. That's okay. I actually thought I was just signing in, but um, I'm really against it. Um, I live at 2245 Kelsenberg Avenue, and as it is, it's really difficult to walk down the street to watch the dogs or anything else. Um, going to work in the morning is 15 to 20 minutes, sometimes half an hour, from my house to the throughway. And if you add a lot of more cars to it, it's going to be impossible. And I go through the same thing when I come home. It takes me more time off the throughway to my house than from downtown Albany to exit 25. So uh, I'm against it, and I'm totally behind all the people who come up before me and presented their case. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Jaworski, I'm sorry. Peter? No? Okay. I'll take this five. Next. Did you did you sign in, Peter? No. We'll, we'll sign you in. Okay, if that's okay. We'll, we'll put put you in uh, right after. Yep. Yeah. Put you in after we call the last person up. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. Who's next? Then? Uh, Joe Volano. Joe Volano. Yeah, I'll, I'll do my. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not being graded out of putting up my charts. Yeah? All right. Yeah, but I'm going to need some help in a minute. I'll call on you when I'm ready for it. Ready? To my fellow Rotterdam residents in this most honorable board, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Joseph Villano. I live at 532 Stanick Road, and I'm a former town board member. I knew if I waited long enough, I would finally get invited to a Friday night happy hour. <laughs> However, this wasn't really the venue I was expected, but I'm very pleased to see the number of people that showed up tonight. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's not why we're here tonight. We're here for the Whispering Pines Senior Project. Yeah, just like having a town board meeting on a Friday night, this project is a terrible idea too. But you board members already know that. Maybe you needed to hear it from the residents again before finally putting this monstrosity to bed. Why do I think that in your very heart of hearts, you already know that this is the second worst example of spot zoning the town has considered in recent years? Second only to the Draper Center. Oh, let me count the ways. First, it's the fact that we're here on a Friday night instead of on our standard Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We've changed the time, we've changed the night. But unfortunately for the board, the people still found you tonight. <laughs> and they're here. <laughs> also, the thing is, if it's because it was in Rotterdam Junction, well, the people would have went the 10 miles and they would have appeared, or you could have switched it. Second, last year, we had a public hearing on this matter. 
to a sellout crowd that filled an auditorium at the Mahanison Technology Building. Yes. It was standing room only, and you heard many of the same things that were brought up tonight. However, let's get down to the logical argument. And it's that people buy houses knowing what is going to be built around them. People buy houses knowing what the zoning is and what will and will not be built in their backyard. It would obviously be fruitful to see what the zoning law actually says and to see what people should have expected in their neighborhood. And with agricultural zoning, they should have expected senior family housing. Check. Outdoor recreation. Check. Barns and farm structures. Sure, check. 500-unit residential complex with commercial aspects to it. Uh, I can't seem to find it anywhere in the agricultural zoning law. But it is there on Chris Gardner and Steve Thomason's Christmas list. Not intended, people. Despite the arguments to the contrary, the last time that this particular project was proposed, and ultimately shot down. It is remarkably similar. All right, and once again, maybe the charts didn't work. The thing is, single family housing, in May of 2017, when it was shot down, there were 67 units. Letter to Lisi now this year, all oh, 67 units, people. Townhomes, 58. Oh, 58. Apartments, one for, can't be. Can't be the same. 119, a little, a little movement. Assisted living, 144, a money maker in the project. 140. Can you imagine that? This is a different project, people. I've been hearing that. 108 memory. Oh, 108. Can you believe that? I wish I had Vanna White up here turning the letters. 196 units. They've gone down by like 30. Isn't that great? I did hear 167 a little earlier, but between uh, Vian Keeney and the town designated engineer, there's a 30 number difference. There's one more thing. We've done a lot of talking about traffic. All right. And uh, they've had some studies done, my friends. What kind of studies? Studies that tell you that under the current plan, there's only going to be two less cars per hour. We're going in the right direction, but is that the change you were looking for, people? Is that the change the board would have expected? And because I'm being asked to move along, you'll see in the evening, a little different. We're talking nine less cars a day. Thank you, people. That's the change you were looking for. Right, board? This is the change that you wanted when the project came back. I ask you, members who did have the opportunity to vote on this last time, stick to your guns. It was a no then, it's a no now. The people of the town of Rotterdam deserve better. They deserve a preservation of what they bought into in the town. They need you to do what you were asked to do. Put the people of the town of Rotterdam first. Adam Wal Adam Gray and Megan Walsh. Is there an Adam and Megan here? Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Adam Gray, nine nine. Go ahead and raise the raise the microphone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Adam Gray, nine nine four Burdick Street. Uh, we moved here about two years ago to a new apartment complex that I believe had similar opposition. I don't know for the same reasons because I wasn't here when those meetings took place. Um, I think you got to think about you know what people are saying. There's a lot of opposition to this project, but change can be difficult, and you have a tough decision to make. And I don't think that you can necessarily take into account the future when making this decision. You have to think about now and what's the best decision for the community 
and for your citizens. And we've heard different sides, and I'm personally in support of this project. I mean, we plan to spend the rest of our lives here, but we can't do that if there's no place for us to go when we're older. We want our kids. here. Okay. I said we want to spend the rest of our lives here, but if there's no place for us to go when we're older, we can't. We want our parents to live here, but they're at their age that they're not going to have anywhere to go either. They can't be here with us if there's nowhere for them to go. So that's why we support this project. Thank you. Howard Vincent. Howard Vincent, I live at 2253 Ellsbury Avenue. I was here last year in my opposition to this zoning change, and I'm back because you're back. In preparing what I would say during my four minutes at this podium, I researched traffic patterns and their effect on the quality of life. Yeah. I read old Daily Gazette articles about Lisi Group projects in this unit, where neighborhoods challenged Lisi's projects and where variances and zoning changes were required. I researched communities where senior living developments in New York and other states were challenged and fought. Some of those fights digressed into court battles that lasted for years at great expense of time and money. But each of those issues in some way represents a fight. I don't think we want to fight. We're a town. We're, we're a great town. I love Rotterdam. My parents moved here when I was a young boy. Our house was on Eugene Drive in the Carmen neighborhood, right down the road from where Diane grew up. I used to pal around with her brother Frank. I knew people like Mel Mintz back then because I went to a Catholic school downtown, and our school bus dropped us off and picked us up in front of his uh, jewelry, store. jewelry store at the corner of State and J Street. Now we're neighbors. I've also known the Armstrongs for many years. Kurt Armstrong graduated from high school with my sister Sheila. And later he gave lessons, golf lessons, to my sons. I remember when tragedy almost struck that family, when Brett had a terrifying tra tractor accident. We were all glad everything turned out okay. The Armstrongs have always been good people and good neighbors, who I'm sure many will miss when the Whispering Pines golf course is gone. I know Lyle and Francis Brown from church. We went to the same church for years. And they're good, hardworking, generous people. The Browns and the Armstrongs have been fixtures in Rotterdam for as long as I can remember. They're good people, and I wish both families well in retirement. They worked hard for all their lives and deserve to reap the rewards that come from that kind of hard work. But I worked hard too and so did my neighbors. And we just want to keep the value in our homes. We worked so hard to get where we are today. We don't want this yanked away from us. I'm at a point in my life <clears throat> where I may want to sell and reap the rewards of all my hard work. This is going to change that for me. It's, it's a terrible thing to be at this stage of life and be threatened with that. Those of us living within this half mile stretch of Hullsburg Avenue that goes from the Thruway Bridge to County Line Road bought homes here because of the lifestyle it offers. We live minutes from a shopping district in one direction and enjoy quick access to the Thruway on the other. And all this while living in a rural setting. There's no other place like it in Rotterdam. Rezoning to a business district, or whatever name you want to call it, threatens to alter the uniqueness of this neighborhood that's made it such a great place to live. Mr. Thomason responded last year to criticisms of his support for this project, stating in the newspaper that this is not a done deal and that we have more dialogue. Dialogue is a conversation between two or more people. Who was this discussion with? The people most affected by this project were left out. Four minutes at a podium does not constitute a conversation. It allows a forum for stating our views, but it certainly isn't dialogue. It's impossible to have meaning dialogue, meaningful dialogue with 100 people. In view of the fact that this project has changed back from 100 home development, which Mr. Lisi uh, alluded to in the newspaper after it was 
shot down last year. Now it's back to the regular plan. If parliamentary procedure would allow it, I would table this discussion from the floor, but I can't. So I'm asking one of you representatives of mine to please table this thing. We need time to really discuss this. And it's, it's a bigger project than any of us could ever imagine. I'd like to see the board set up a, a meeting with a few representatives from our neighborhood to sit down with the Browns, the Armstrongs, the representatives of the town board and the developer. There's too much to be discussed in a four minute speech. Many of us feel that this is a done deal, that the only reason for this hearing is to gain another check mark. Site plan application, check. Planning board review, check. Public hearing, check. We have literally no say in this process. And it looks like we're heading toward a predetermined conclusion. Tell me I'm wrong and prove it by tonight's vote and give us an opportunity to sit down for real dialogue. Finally, I'd like to briefly talk about this from the perspective of a senior citizen. Mr. Vincent. The idea of a 55 and older community is, has a real appeal to somebody in my age group. But my idea of that type of development is far from yours. I would look for a quiet neighborhood where there might be a gym or a swimming pool. Maybe a community golf. A golf course is great. It'd be a place where people could meet, share dinners, entertain guests, play cards on Wednesday <coughs> night, or share any kind of a neighborhood activity. I'm not interested in moving to a development where I can die in place. Thanks, Mr. Vincent. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are just a point of We are not voting on anything this evening having to do with this project. Um, this, there are there are still two weeks worth of written comments that um, we have to take in. So we're having a public hearing tonight, but the written comments uh, can be submitted through May 25th. Jack Shealy. Are you going to give me a hand? <laughs> Good evening. Jack Shealy, 99 Stacy Crest Drive. Um, Supervisor Steve, down board. Town, uh, Diane. <laughs> I'm here in support of this. Uh, I want to say that last year when we had the meetings, I was there and so forth. And as you can tell, my health has gone to hell since then. And now I'm being forced to move out of Rotterdam to Scotia just to get housing that I need. We don't have it in Rotterdam. We need it here, and I hope I can live long enough to see this project completed so that I can move back to my town, Rotterdam. Thank you. Vincent Gallo. Uh, good evening. My name is Vincent Gallo. I live at uh, 38 Mile Standish Road. Um, most of you folks here know my family uh, we've been around the neighborhood for you know about 70 plus years uh, I'm here tonight in support of the village at West Green Pines project uh, this development will benefit most of our neighboring senior citizens that live in this area that do want to stay in the area um, you know the tax um, you know benefits will benefit the town the school districts in both Shelmont and Mahonison um, you know, residents will also that are in that area will enjoy, you know, the amenities that have been discussed. Uh, you know, overall, creating um, you know a wonderful environment for you know, hopefully, um, you know, my my parents that you know will need something like this when they want to live in the area. So, thank you very much. Jennifer Abel.
Hi, my name is Jennifer Abel. I live at 28 Peter Drive. Um, I was approached the other day and I was asked how I thought about, or what I thought about this project at Whispering Pines. Um, my exact words were, it sucks. Um, I have just moved in about three years ago to this house and there was a reason that I moved into this neighborhood because it is quiet, it's a nice dead end road. I can walk my dog without the potential of being hit by a car to which my dog actually had lost his eye from a previous neighborhood. Um, this directly affects my neighborhood with the possible emergency routes that with the emergency vehicles that would be going to the development that would be built behind our house. Um, I am looking to have a family one day and if I have a child sleeping, I do not want to have the sirens coming up and down our road. I can't imagine how this is actually going to be affecting the people that live on Heldeberg Ave or Cipriana Drive. It sucks and it is not welcome on Keter Drive and it should not be welcome on Heldeberg Ave, Cipriana Ave. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Fregoletto, I'm at 1315 Cipriano Terrace. Um, I really didn't have my name on the list, but I thought that it was an open spot, so I just want to be here today and say how I'm in opposition to this. I also wanted to say, which hasn't come up, I don't believe, of all the opposition we hear throughout this for the last year and a half, no one is against seniors. I dare to say, if 55 and older is a senior, then hello, welcome everybody, because I'm right there. Um, this is, you know, throughout the town here, everywhere I go, Stewart's in the morning, the gas stations uh, on the other side of town, the conversation's going on everywhere. I have heard some people that are for this, but the opposition is, you know, I can't throw numbers, nine to, nine to one. Um, not a bad idea, not a bad concept, but there's other areas for this. I realize the push by the firm that's trying to put this out there because I'm sure there's hundreds of thousands of dollars in uh, engineering and so forth that's gone into this. However, if this does get voted down, and I hope it does, because it was already voted down one time, uh, I would think that uh, minds weren't changed by anything because the opposition is all still here. but. Uh, it just, it just doesn't belong here. Um, there are other areas. I heard and I read somewhere that they had said maybe it brings $400,000 worth of revenue and taxes into the town. I would say how much is the cost of a circle at uh, the Stewart's and Dunkin' Donuts up there because you can't get through that light. I'm sure that's all of that or more being in a construction business. I've also talked to some other business owners I dare to say even a town worker or two that are against this but are afraid to come and stand here for the, uh, uh, they're afraid of maybe coming before her for future projects, they just didn't want to get involved, but they were not for this. And there are a few, but I cannot mention their names. There's been overwhelming opposition to this. Uh, the main thing saying spot zoning. This is spot zoning. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. I'm not a lawyer, but it's all here. Some other people have done the homework. Um, I know a lot of people from Rotterdam here want to come here, want to enjoy this. Uh, I would say, are there really that many seniors in Rotterdam to come here? I think this thing will get filled by others from other towns, That's which right. in my mind puts this as a, a commercial thing for moneymaker for someone, not our town. Um, it's the same project, uh, I mean, you voted no last year, and now it came to us again, and a building was shrunk, and some bushes removed, and a road was changed, but it's the same monster. I urge you to vote no again. Please listen to the opposition on this matter. Thank you.
<laughs> is there anyone else that would like to be heard this evening? Would you like to be heard? Sir, just please state your name and address for the record. My name is Dr. Roy Onion. I live at 26 Ronnie Court. I'm right across the street from Whispering Pine. I was at the meeting last year uh, when this came to a vote. And I just want to, the traffic is one thing that's, uh, not having kids walk along the street is another thing. Try not to get, walking the dogs, try not to get hit by cars is another thing. And, but when it comes right down to it, it's, it's a bad idea to put it there. I mean, I just hit 60 in January. So I went from interior firefighting to exterior firefighting because I didn't want to be a burden or I didn't want to be a liability to the rest of the fire department because I'm a member of Rotterdam District 2 and I know 60 feet up is going to be a real problem. It's going to have to go to Carmen for their uh, snorkel. We don't have, we have a new truck on order, but it's going to be a while before it gets here. I know trying to get in and out is a real nightmare. Uh, if there's a fire in there, we went from 220 calls five years ago to over 300 calls, and a lot of that happens to be smoke alarm detectors, people didn't change their batteries, and it comes down to false alarms, somebody put their pizza in the oven and fell asleep and forgot it, and then the alarms go off, and it got to the point now where we have 43 active firefighters, uh, we went from 51, 52, a lot of the guys that have been in there for 10 plus years have gone to uh, honorary <coughs> retirement. Uh, it's difficult. Now when the alarm goes off Monday through Friday from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock, you're asking everybody to, all the townships, all the different carmen and, and Rotterdam District 2 and Rotterdam 6 and 4 will all meet together because they don't have enough guys to get on the truck. Now you want to add 125 houses, another 300 plus uh, developments, a whole lot more alarms going off. You're going from 320 to maybe 400 by the end of the year. There aren't enough firefighters out there to cover it, and the liability with the police officers and other problems with it, uh, it just, it's going to be a burden that's going to be hard to recover from. And then the sewer lines and the, the drainage and the water flow and everything else that goes with it, it just, there's got to be a better place to put it for senior citizens. There's got to be a better place where there's going to be better access. Putting everything on Heldeberg Avenue is going to be a real difficult problem, not only with the four-year construction project, but with the houses, with the, the, the burden on the ambulances, the burden on the fire department, the burden on the police officers. It's going to be overwhelming. You may not see it now, but it's going to happen five years, six years down the road, and things are going to, bad things are going to happen, and we're not going to be able to recover from it. Anyway, could you just tell me the last thing? Oh, Youngin, O-Y-A-N-G-E-N. I'm at 26 Ronnie Court. Thank you. Parents and neighbors did a really good job discussing their concerns about the project going through. I would not like it to go through, but I have a little bit of a different perspective on why I believe that. For all of you who did not like taking your high school literature class, this is now your time where you can take a nap. <laughs> I'd like to read a poem that I found about nature, and it is by Gabrielle Maestri. Stand up and look outside. See out your window and all the precious things nature has to offer. Look at all the green, tree, green fields we have. Look at the children playing in them. Not a single child sits down inside. The very four walls of his home. Look at all the beautiful green trees. Look at all the birds sheltering from the scorching sun under these trees. Listen to the laughter of the children. Listen to the chirping of the birds. Other than that, it's complete and utter silence. No other sound can be heard. It's like you could hear the earth speaking to us. Breathe the crisp, crisp, soft air, clean as can be. Breathe as it soothes your lungs, like no other experience you have ever experienced. Breathe before it's too late. Now open your eyes, what do you see? See out of your window, all the precious things nature offered. 
offered because we have lost it all. Mankind has destroyed nature with his very own hands. We have no one to blame but ourselves. Look at all the brown buildings we have. No child may go and play in such a building. No, it's private property now. It no longer bring, belongs to nature, which was free to us all. Now everyone feels comfortable within the four walls of his home. Even the children have, having nowhere to go and play. They can't complain as they never got to experience nature and its once everlasting beauty. Look at the few trees that are left barely green. Look at the few birds sheltering from the ever more blazing sun. Look as the birds fly away, having nowhere to go. Look as those men cut down these little trees we have left so that mankind could sit comfortable at home. Burn these very trees to keep warm. Where shall these birds go? Where? Listen, listen, listen. You can no longer hear the screams of the earth, screams of agony asking us to stop. All you can hear out your window is noise, noise created by mankind. Construction, traffic, music, polluting the earth with noise. Don't even try to breathe. What was once transparent and crisp is now brown and heavy. Don't breathe if you want to save your lungs. With every breath, your lungs cough up all the pollution and the garbage we have thrown out into this world. Have we not seen enough of this tragedy? Have we not seen enough of this nightmare? We are grabbing Earth and pulling her down into destruction. I think that we need to address the many seniors looking for housing in Rotterdam, but also consider the beautiful wildlife and nature that Rotterdam possesses on this side of the town. As a kid who has grown up here, that is something that I will really miss. Thank you. Thank you for hearing me tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. My name is Deborah Grasso. I live on 10 Edward Drive, uh, which is a dead end street off the end of Peter. Um, my property is directly affected by this development, so I'm here to um, indicate my opposition to the growth of this uh, development. I certainly can um, associate with and empathize with the seniors that are here today talking about staying in their town for senior housing. I definitely think it's something that needs to be um, addressed by the town. I just don't believe that this is the area for it. Um, my mother is a senior and she has been at Kingsway for the last several years. Um, it's, I literally see her every day. It's a less than five mile drive to get to see her. There are other facilities available and I certainly think that the town would be good at making available senior living for the seniors in this community as well. My property, as I said, is directly affected by this construction. I have seven and a half acres that will board the property that they're talking about developing, which to address the young lady's poem, all of my wildlife will be gone. The noise that comes up and down the street will improve or will increase. The woman in the back who's my neighbor on Keter um, said it succinctly, I think this project sucks for the people that are directly affected by the land that's around this development. I understand the people that have a need for senior housing, but please, this is not the area for it. I beg you to please defeat this project. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, anyone else see me before we... Okay, so we're going to go through and uh, just begin by closing the public hearings one at a time. Okay, anyone else like to be heard on public hearing one this evening? Anyone else like to be heard on public hearing one this evening? Anyone else like to be heard on public hearing one this evening? Okay, none. Declare public hearing one closed. Public hearing two. Anyone else like to be heard on public hearing two? Anyone else like to be heard on public hearing two? Anyone else like to be heard on public hearing two? Okay, we'll close public hearing two. And anyone would like to be heard on public hearing three this evening? Anyone would like to be heard on public hearing three? Anyone would like to be heard on public hearing three? Okay, declare public hearing three closed. I want to thank you all for taking the time to come here this evening as well. I appreciate it very, very much. We're going to have public comment privilege of the floor now, so if you have something different that you'd like to, to bring up at this time, um, just raise your hand and I'll call you up to the floor. Rick, did you want to come up for something else?
Rick O'Moore and I live on West Side Avenue. Um, probably everybody saw in the paper or whatever. Back in December, we had a house fire just across, the, pretty much across the street from me. And the house on either side, that house burned down, they demolished it, and the house on either side got damaged. Well, the lady on the one side, I was just over her house yesterday, uh, checking it out and everything. She's already put new siding up, but now, because nothing has been cleaned up, it's just a big disaster of a mess. And so, uh, uh, when the wind blows, there's all kinds of soot on her, on her lawns. It's, you know, burned uh, wood, burned everything. It's just a disaster. And now, it's one thing, granted, not to do anything while it's winter time, but now it, you're a month and a half into it, and nothing has happened to it. They need to either, I, I told her to call Hencon, and I, I told her they were the best ones to call. But somebody needs to do something because she shouldn't have to put up with this. I mean, it's just ridiculous because the value of her house, plus you're gonna have rats, uh, skunks, everything in that area. And it's between two beautiful houses of two, two people that take great care of the property. And one on the one side, the gentleman, he works for the town. He shouldn't have to put up with this either. It's, it's ridiculous that nothing's been done. <laughs> That per, the people that own a home or whatever, they need to be told, have it done by, like say, the end of June. If you don't, you start getting fined daily. Because no one should have to put up with that. And her house is 20, uh, no, 30, 20, uh, what was it? 2031 or 3021. Well, it's easier, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to be flippant or, or wise, but it's easy to find. So we'll, and we're, we've been out there, Mickey's been out there. So let me have, we'll, we'll be on that tomorrow morning, Rick, I pre or, you know, it's okay. No, I'm just, not, I mean, we have somebody to go out outside. Not me, but I mean, I'm looking out for my neighbor. So, you know? Yeah, we're gonna have. Honestly, we'll have somebody drive by there tomorrow, and we'll get to see what we can do tomorrow and over the weekend, if not Monday. Thank okay, you. you're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else on the public comment privilege of the floor on, on a different topic? Yeah. We're not going to talk whispering pines again, Mr. Mintz, Joe. Well, you can. I mean, you can. Don't misunderstand me. I got something else. To say. Joe has something else to say. Go ahead, Mr. Mitchell. Uh, this has been a problem for the last 15, 20 years uh, since I lived at the sort of the end of Helderberg. The water pressure seems to be getting less and less, and I don't know if there's anything we can look into to see. Right now, it's really way down, and that is becoming a problem in our home. So. Uh, which, what's your address again, Mr. Mitchell? 2273. 2273. Corner of Helderberg. I know where we are, but I, I just yeah. want to, you know. Okay. But I'll, the water I'll pressure is, and uh, that's a problem. Okay. Let me have, um, we'll have, we'll have one of our water department people get in touch with you. I appreciate it. And, and we'll check it out, because it hopefully it has, say it like this, it's, more having to do with something for you and not everybody else. There. We'll check it out. Well, I don't know if that's a problem. It could be. Is it, Joe? Yeah, I'm, all right. I'm right down the street. Come, come, all right, come on. So one of the things that, just just as a, just to edify here a little bit on that, so we, we, are, we are in the, I guess I want to say phase, uh, you know, if you're looking for an alphabet of A to Z where we are, we're probably around G or H right now on the planning of what we're doing with grant money and some a low interest loan that we're getting from the state to make improvements to our water system. And Helderberg Avenue water tank is one of those improvements that's in, in this plan besides the repainting and recoding of the water tank that's on May Avenue that you can see clearly off 890 needs, needs to work. And also some improvements to our um, uh, to our uh, transmission lines and, and so on. So there's a lot that's going on, but we'll look into that specifically. What, what else did you have to talk about, Mr. Brown? I just want to give props to the town because um, Buddy and I were doing a project at our house. We're clearing a lot of brush out. And, I mean, we put it out on the curb and I call and they come right away and those guys do a great job of cleaning it up. And I just want to uh, well, thank you for that. it. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, anyone else under public comment privilege of the floor this evening? Anyone else under public comment privilege of the floor? Okay, no, thank you very much. All right, um, we're going to move into one resolution this evening. 
and then I'm sure that the that the um, board members might have one or two things to say uh, when it comes to when it comes to the voting on, on resolutions that are germane could someone just close those doors for us thank you very much thank you mr. Christo I see you back there Evan's very tall handsome son okay so we have we have um, when we if if and when we have future meetings having to do with this project or any other there will be there are resolutions that will be put on the agenda at that time people will have more opportunity to speak about these uh, resolutions again that have germane to any project including this one um, in the past uh, there, there was never a vote on the zone change there was a vote to my recollection on the draft language to the uh, for senior living district that's what was defeated it was not the zone change itself so in other words we didn't add that zoning to the uh, to the town's zoning classifications or to the town comprehensive plan and the town, town's comprehensive plan has been updated many many times and um, at some point we can have I want to say an exercise or a meeting that talks about where we are and uh, with our new classifications that we've put into place more importantly the the um, uh, the uh, when you say update, it's the reconstitution of the of the actual uh, comprehensive plan. So we'll talk about that another time. So uh, we have a motion here, uh, resolution number one sixteen. Excuse me, resolution one sixty nine eighteen. Ms. Marco, could you read that for us, please? Authorize the supervisor to enter an agreement with Conti Appraisal and Consulting LLC six fourteen Route nine W Glenmont, New York one two zero seven seven for appraisal services for the various properties located in the town of Rotterdam and the amount not to exceed seven thousand dollars. Okay, may I have a motion, please? I'll make the motion. Okay, motion by Mr. Christu. Is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, second by Ms. Miller Herrera. Anyone on the question, please? So briefly, I would just like you to know what we are doing. Um, there are um, three parcels of property that the town is, um, is engaging a commercial industrial appraiser to appraise for us. One is the existing highway department on Duanesburg Road so that we can uh, attest to its value, or range of value. The other is a piece of property that is located on 5S, which is known as Young's Auto. That property, the town has uh, received in receipt of a, a grant. We haven't received the money yet because we haven't uh, performed the, uh, the uh, purchase transaction as of yet. But the town's interest is to purchase that property, clean it up, and protect our water wells and water three on 5S. And the grant that we received is approximately $48,000 and change. So we're in that process and we want it to, uh, again, get, a, get an accurate uh, value to that property. The other is a property that is known as 301 Bon Roll Drive. So directly across the street from the town sewer plant on Campbell Road. That property consists of approximately eight acres. And that is property that we are hopeful to relocate our uh, transfer station for the brush and leaf program in town, construct a salt building on that property, and third, at some future date, uh, construct a highway department, new highway building. So that is uh, what we are doing. I want everyone to understand, know what the addresses were and just be transparent about what we're doing. So um, we have a motion by uh, Mr. Christou and a second by Ms. Miller Herrera. Anyone else on the question? All right, let's call for a vote, please. Mr. Christou? Yes. Mr. Gitarelli? Yes. Mrs. Miller Herrera? Yes. Mr. Signor? Yes. Mr. Thomas Owen? Yes. Five yes. Okay, resolution 169.18 passes. Now, um, anyone have anything under committee reports or miscellaneous this evening? Uh, just again, to remind the softball game. Okay, but tomorrow at three. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry, the game tomorrow is postponed. Yeah. Is it? He wants to play so bad. No, I mean, no, it's, no, it's, no, it's no, we're, 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 we're beyond. We're, we're beyond that now. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so be, be, because because there are people who are afraid of rain. <laughs> not everyone's afraid of rain. But uh, the, the Battle of the Badges, uh, the finest versus the bravest, you can go on fundabilities.com, just like it sounds, fundabilities.com. They're raising money for um, Babe Ruth Fields. Uh, that, that game will now be Sunday, May 20th, so next Sunday, at 3 p.m. 
same place, Babe Ruth Memorial Park. The weather now on the Weather Channel has a big sun there instead of a little, instead of the rain clouds. So let's hope that doesn't change. And it's going to be a lot warmer out, which uh, I think the 50s would be better than the 70s to play, but it's going to be fun. So please, please turn out. Uh, please come and join us. What we intend to do is we're going to have parking here in and around Town Hall. Uh, we'll have the police, um, someone on Curry Road directing some traffic because I'm hopeful that it's busy. And then there is parking off of Poutry Avenue, Denver Avenue. There's a gravel parking lot um, in between a couple of the fields there. So please uh, consider coming to the game next uh, next Sunday at 3 p.m. So Steve, you got another week to kind of get in shape and you know, <laughs> for, you know, make your case. My goal is to cheer yeah. people on, right? Because I won't be yeah. playing, swinging, so, or doing anything. Bring your glove anyway. You never know. They might, they might, they might, not, uh, not, not, they might call you in. Now you're, now you're taunting me. I, I am a little bit. Don't Bring your marker. Maybe someone's going to someone's gonna want you to sign a ball for them. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose they hit me with it, right? Yeah. Okay. So, um, anyone else? Uh, I, I just want to thank everybody. You know, um, most of you spoke in a very civil manner, which is appreciated. Only one person chose to personalize it and attack our supervisor and throw out a, a name of a county official, which made no sense to me. But other than that, you know what? This is a very passionate issue. Um, this is part of the process to allow the public to come and be heard. Uh, Friday was not our first choice. It was never met, although some people tried to create scandal out of it. Uh, we had a board member who, uh, whose husband was deployed, and I have a daughter who's graduated from college. We threw out a bunch of dates. We can make that recording available to you to, to diffuse any thoughts of scandal or conspiracy, which some people seem to be obsessed with. But I want to thank everybody, um, especially Christy Dodson for that very nice poem. It was very nice, and um, it was just a nice, uh, a nice uh, ending to a very passionate, passionate subject. Um, everybody has a, uh, both sides gave the other side the opportunity to speak, which is very impressive, and it's a testimony to the residents of our town. And I think everybody is in agreement that this is uh, our seniors are very important, an integral part of our society. And we hear all of your comments loud and clear. And again, thank you for being civil. Thank you very much. I just want to, I want to join in that. Thank you. Joe, send for the microphone towards you. I know you're... <laughs> no, I'm, I'm appreciative as well of all the feedback and the input. I've spent a lot of time educating myself on this project. And uh, a lot of the information is from you. And I thank you. Thanks very much. Mr. Okay, Supervisor, I move to adjourn. See how quick that he does that? <laughs> exactly. see, see how quick he does that? <laughs> All right, so uh, we have a motion by Mr. Chris to a second by Mr. Gitterelli to adjourn. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you so very, very much for coming this evening. Appreciate your time and your efforts.